One of the greatest conversations of this era regarding media is surrounding the digital format and how we are becoming more and more of a completely digital world. Uh, we're starting to see physical media disappear. Brick and mortar stores are selling them less and companies in general are creating less physical versions of their products because they prefer the convenience of digital in the way that there's no qualms about distribution. You can just put it up on a server and have people download it from there, from the comfort of their homes. There's just less time and money spent on the distribution aspect. And then consumers will tend to favor digital because it is also more convenient for them. They don't have to go out of their way to go to a store and purchase a physical product. But at the same time, there are those people who do value physical media because they recognize the dangers of an all digital world. Because at the end of the day, your ability to re-download that digital media with all the DRMs involved and all the license protections and the like, all of that relies on companies being able to continuously host for the long term the content that they allege that you have bought and owned. Whereas when you buy physical, you do have that in the palm of your hands and they can't take it away from you unless they break in. These are the questions that we're asking and another major question is, Will legislation ever catch up? Will they recognize the dangers of an all digital future and realize how companies are selling digital products as if they're things that you own when in reality that's not the case? You're more like renting them and sure it's for the long term, but eventually the license for your digital product can expire and they can just decide that you no longer own the product that you paid for. Well, it turns out that here in the US and in California specifically, legislators have been paying attention to this issue that has been raised more and more, especially throughout the last couple of years and the last couple of months, especially I feel with various incidents that have stirred up this conversation. And so right here we have a headline that IGN published on Twitter that reads, California Governor Gavin Newsom has signed a bill into law that will force storefronts to admit that you don't actually own your digitally purchased games, films, and TV shows. You're just licensing them. This is not a law that's being proposed or presented. This is something that's already been signed and will come into effect in the not-so-distant future. And while this doesn't stop companies from being able to pull purchase digital media from your library when they feel like it in the future, it does at the very least force them to put out there a certain level of honesty that might have their sales suffer because people will be very clearly informed that you're not actually buying a product and owning it, you're just temporarily renting it, which is a very important distinction. If you go to storefronts right now, they all say that you are able to buy something. You click on the buy button that is something that you can no longer do if you're a company once this law comes into effect. If your product is digital and there's absolutely no guarantee that you'll be able to allow people to access that in perpetuity and you don't allow people to download that software in a way that that can be accessed forever, regardless of whether you have an internet connection or not without you know servers having to check in, whether you have a license, whatever. That's why GOG took a minute to comment, well, 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 because as you know, GOG sells all their games DRM free, meaning that once you download something from GOG, that digital file doesn't have to check in with anything. That digital file is everything you need to access the contents of that game. And you can you know copy and paste it, move it around however you like. And uh, if GOG goes down, but you still have that file you downloaded from GOG, you get to keep it forever and it will never go offline. It will never become a sort of a broken product that you can no longer access. GOG's downloaded games will never cease to function as a result of a company pulling uh, a certain product from the store. More specifics about the law can be found in this Verge article whose headline reads, California's new law forces digital stores to admit you're just licensing content, not 
buying it. But before we discuss that, you know what's more important than protecting your digital library? Protecting your personal information. Which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Delete Me, a subscription service dedicated to protecting your personal information and keeping it private. In this digital age when data brokers are constantly selling your personal data to shady entities, it is more important than ever to be proactive about your digital footprint and that's where Delete Me comes in. It is a one-stop shop for deleting your personal information from search results and hundreds of data broker websites. Everything from your name, age, past and present addresses, photos, email, phone numbers, relatives, social media, occupation, marital status, property value, so on and so forth. Information that nefarious actors could try to take advantage of. As someone who is a public figure and the potential target of harassment, of scams, of doxing, identity theft, stalking, you name it, what Delete Me offers is actually pretty invaluable. What's particularly great about Delete Me is that it's constantly active. After you get set up, it will monitor sites and remove your data as needed. You can also make your own custom requests to have your information removed from specific sources by Delete Me's experts. If digital privacy is a top priority for you like it is for me, then protect your data with Delete Me by using my link, joindeleteme.com slash yong20 and use my code yong20 to get 20% off checkout with family plans available as well. All of this can be found in the description and comment section below. So it is further stated down here that California Governor Gavin Newsom has signed a law, AB 2426, to combat disappearing purchases of digital games, movies, music, and ebooks. This law is meant to cover digital media across the board, which is even better. It'll force digital storefronts to tell customers they're just getting a license to use the digital media rather than suggesting they actually own it. The law comes into effect next year year in 2025, which is not that far away. So we're going to start seeing a paradigm shift in the way shops, digital storefronts list their games and what words they use for the purchase button that can no longer say purchase or buy if it has some kind of DRM on it, if there's no guarantee you can just download it and keep it forever. It'll ban digital stores from using terms like buy or purchase unless they inform customers that they're not getting unrestricted access to whatever they're buying. Storefronts will have to tell customers they're getting a license that can be revoked. Companies that break the rule could be fined for false advertising because that's precisely what's been happening for the masses out there who just kind of interpret the buy button as literally buying it and keeping it forever and don't really have the full scope of what that is, technologically speaking, where companies can revoke that whenever they want. You know, they were uh, given the false sense of security that this digital product will stay in their library at infinitum. So this law coming into effect, I think is a great first step into protecting customers from the kind of false advertising we've seen from companies and protecting folks from the idea that digital purchases are permanent, which is just an idea that doesn't exist and informing customers of what the consequences of an all digital era are. Now, the reason GOG can say, well, 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 is because this new law won't apply to stores that offer permanent offline downloads, which is exactly what GOG offers. Once you download an installer for a game, there are no conditions involved in being able to use it. And I'm willing to bet you a lot of what inspired legislators to hop on this and sign a bill uh, for a law like this has to do with Sony and Ubisoft and similar companies who once upon a time did risk or did fully execute the removal of digital content from people's libraries without their consent, without them being fully aware that companies even had that capability. I think one of the biggest movements that really drew eyes to the dangers of an all digital future is stop killing games. This is the website right here. You can see already just from the number of signatures on this European Citizens Initiative petition, how much uh, this movement has kind of come to the public limelight. 362,169 signatures, with the goal here seemingly being to garner over a million signatures. And the goal of this movement isn't just to have companies disclose that you don't own things that you buy digitally, and for companies to disclose that you don't own anything that you buy digitally, but to end this idea of companies even being able to 
pull products from your library without your consent as a result of whatever their games go offline or they don't feel like selling their games anymore their license expiring whatever it doesn't matter what the excuse is there shouldn't be this idea that a product can just fully disappear from the face of the earth forever I mean, that is just a complete detriment to preservation of gaming history, but also a detriment to customers who feel like, obviously, that when they buy something, they should have more say on how that uh, that product is able to be accessed. And, you know, if a game goes offline, you know, you should allow people to make their own private servers, uh, still retain the digital files in their library and not have that forcibly removed. Uh, your library should feel sacred, you know what I mean? Because it, it, it feels invasive when a company comes in and no matter what the reason, it is the digital equivalent of them breaking into your house and deciding that they need to take your video game off your shelf because they decided that uh, it is no longer a product they want to see out there the, because they want it to see disappear from the face of the earth. Once you put it out there, that shouldn't be up to them. And for those who don't know, this whole Stop Killing Games movement started because Ubisoft deleted the crew from players' libraries without their consent, without their permission. The company's pulling licenses from paying customers now that the servers have shut down. This was an always online game for unnecessary reasons they could have made it so that the online requirements aren't there and players are still allowed to access the basic bones of the crew which even as a single player game it can kind of work but the fact that they just decided without refunds that this game is no longer a product that you're allowed to own and even if you paid money for it uh, they can go in there and just strip that from you was incredibly invasive and a lot of people felt the same to the point where this stop killing games movement gained the kind of traction that it did i mean this kind of uh signature numbers is is, is not something you see in in all petitions clearly uh there's there are strong feelings about the idea of digital ownership companies shouldn't be able to allow to have full control over the existence of digital content. If they want to take it off store shelves, fine, but the people who bought it should still be allowed to keep that content and they shouldn't be able to just erase history when they feel like it. And then there was that major incident with PlayStation, which yes, is a gaming company, but this particular incident involved the potential removal of digital movies from your library. People got this message saying, dear PlayStation customer, as of December 31st, 2023, due to our content licensing around arrangements with content providers, you'll no longer be able to watch any of your previously purchased discovery content, and the content will be removed from your video library. It wasn't until the backlash got so big and this drew so much attention as to be a potential legal liability for Sony and PlayStation that they decided to publish the following on December 21st, 2023. Due to updated licensing arrangements, the discovery content removal planned for December 31st, 2023 is no longer occurring. We appreciate your ongoing support and feedback. So they backpedaled on this particular incident, but they didn't on a previous incident from July 8th, 2022, where the PlayStation still removed purchased movies from libraries after service shutdown. More specific numbers can be found right here. The change affects 314 titles in Germany and 137 in Austria. And the reason Sony was able to get away with this incident was because this was done in a smaller market where this issue garnered less attention. But the latest incident from December of 2023, that affected people in the U.S. and in major markets. And so now that people got wind of the dangers of an all digital future and how companies can just do this and, are, and were made aware that such a possibility exists, uh, this is when uh, this topic gained a lot of traction. I think stuff like this combined with what happened with uh, Ubisoft killing off the crew and removing that from players' libraries and stop killing games, gained traction. Between all that, I think that's what caught legislators' eyes and had them engage in uh, plans to put out legislation that is now legitimate, that has been signed. There's a bill now that's it, that is going to come into effect in 2025 that isn't the be-all end-all solution but is a good first step to at least 
putting a spotlight on the issue and putting pressure on companies. Also worth noting is that Sony was involved in this incident involving Crunchyroll and Funimation. Recall that Funimation was kind of fused into Crunchyroll and Funimation itself was shut down. And so when asked what was going to happen to digital copies from Funimation account holders, it was stated right here that Crunchyroll does not support Funimation digital copies, which means that access to previously available digital copies will not be supported which is something that garnered a lot of backlash and is just utter bullshit. And once again, a cautionary tale about this idea of an all digital future and companies pushing for that and us allowing it. This stuff's happening more and more and it's become frequent enough and concerning enough that I cannot disagree with this quote that garnered a lot of approval. If paying isn't owning, piracy isn't stealing. This right here on Twitter alone garnered over 144,000 likes, over 5.3 million views, and is a sentiment that many share. I mean, yeah, if this is how you want to play companies, then I guess piracy isn't stealing. If people found a way to pirate the crew and get it back up and running with their own private servers, after you pull that bullshit move, Ubisoft, where you took the game away from people's libraries without their permission, them doing all that I don't think is morally incorrect. I mean, if anything, you're encouraging for people to engage in that kind of activity. Activity. I'll close this video off by once again highlighting this video where Christopher Nolan talks about the importance of physical media and nails it on the head in regards to the dangers of an all digital future. Here's what he had to say. Buy a 4K UHD, you buy a Blu-ray, it's on your shelf, it's yours. No company, you know, is going to break into your house and take it from you and <laughs> repossess it. You know, it's yours and, and you own it. Um, that's never really the case with any form of digital distribution. You're relying on the continued health of the supplier, the company who's supplying it, you know, what, what have you. Yeah, I mean, even huge names like Christopher Nolan recognize the dangers of an all digital future and it's something that he wants to avoid at all costs because as a filmmaker and as a film buff, he knows what it's like to have that feeling of pure ownership over uh, a medium that, you know, for him as an artist is sacred and he wants to ensure that everything he buys is something that is not corporately controlled, an artwork that he can continue to access, like a painting up on a wall. You know what I mean? If it's something that moves you, you know, it shouldn't be something that a company can come in and, and strip away from you and remove from your wall. It should just be something that you can be secure in, in, in fully knowing that it will always be there as long as you keep it safe and you protect it and you cherish it. The fact that legislators are at least aware enough to start making some moves, that's an encouraging sign. I still feel like we need to do more. I think Stop Killing Games has the right idea of what legislators need to be encouraged to do and what they need to be encouraged to stop companies from doing. But alas, I'll take any victories right now and hopefully this can be expanded upon further in the future. In the meantime, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this legislation and how you think legislators should handle this uh, whole idea of an all digital future and the kinds of legislations they should put into play. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.